my mom and two of my older brothers were horror fans of so I was exposed to them when I was pretty young. Um, I had the best mother. She let me stay up late to watch them. I love being scared, love scaring people. Plus the house I grew up in was haunted and um, the son of Sam shot my babysitter. So I was uh, kind of predisposed to horror. The house I live in here with my hubba hubba is not haunted, unfortunately. Um, so it's up to me to keep things scary. Gay guys in horror films are really not like me because they usually get killed early on and they don't get a chance to have sex. My ass would be out of there faster than the black guy and I'd be back at home, doors locked, all the curtains drawn, closets closed, carefully having sex while making sure no body parts were hanging over the edge of the bed. Bite marks. I love bite marks. I'm sitting on a couple of them right now. Um, no, actually, bite marks is a gay horror film that has everything. There's a cute main couple, a hot third wheel I'd like to take for a spin, um, gay sex, loads of humor and meta in-jokes, sexy scary shirtless vampires, that's awesome, blood, jump scares, um, and there's no hidden agenda. It's just a gay guys hitching a ride into a horror movie situation film. Awesome. Some queer horror is born that way because the filmmakers are literally making queer horror. Other times it's in the subtext, whether the gay stuff is implied or masked by metaphor. And other times viewers can essentially make a horror film queer by deconstructing the fuck out of it in an attempt to convert it. Um, I rarely try to convince myself that a movie was made with my sexuality in mind. Uh, there, well, well, there was this one time I did blog about a film called Tempest Tormentum that I thought was totally gay. <laughs> so uh, the director actually reached out to me to let me know he loved that I was able to get all that gay stuff from the film, but I was totally wrong. Personally, I think he was totally wrong. <laughs> but uh, seriously, that's why I don't read too hard into outing the gay possibilities of horror. I'd rather indulge in actual gay horror and um, create my own gay stories. Queer coding to me is basically analyzing or overanalyzing something in a movie as queer. Um, and it doesn't always mean in a good way. Um, that's why I cringe every time someone thinks they're the first person to discover Elm Street 2 is the most homoerotic or gay horror movie ever. First of all, it's not, because there are actual gay horror movies. And second, even though there are several flashes of man-ass, uh, the movie is absolutely homophobic. Um, a gym teacher hangs out at a queer bar but he preys on underage boys, so you get that pedophile thing, um, and then he gets brutally murdered for it. Um, and then the lesson we learn from Jesse, our main boy Jesse, is that, you know, he has Freddy inside of him, and when he gets the urge to sleep with his best friend, he will inevitably be the death of that friend. And then the only thing that will save him from those desires is the love of a female who looks like Meryl Streep. A gay series, well, a gay show, um, a show I would consider to be gay man friendly is the ghost comedy Deadbeat on Hulu, starring Cutie Bear, Tyler Labine. Yes, there are so many gay situations in this show. It's a, it's adolescent sex humor, and that's right up my alley. That's my age group. <laughs> uh, but his character's not gay, but um, I'm not offended by the whole gay baiting concept, so I love that show for its gay content. And then there's The Brilliant in the Flesh, which is a BBC show. It's about zombies being integrated back into society, but they're still treated as monsters. Um, you know, the main zombie guy is gay, so that's some queer coding DP right there. <laughs> there are also so many good, I mean, horror shows with gay content over the years and the recent decades, and um, some with all gay episodes. I, you know, I have a whole listing of them on my site. As for movies I'd consider queer, um, probably David Dakota films that are about the gayest not-gay horror films there are. You know, a bunch of 
guys running around in their tidy whities No, nothing gay here. Other than that, Chucky movies went queer thanks to Don Mancini. He introduced the bitchy diva doll, included Alexis Arquette in one of the films, and made Chucky and Tiffany's child question their gender. You know? Right, Chuck? Ow, get your knife out of there. Ow! I know it's trendy to jump on that bandwagon concluding that queer people like horror because either they identify with the ostracized, misunderstood monster, or because monsters are often camp-tastic and doing the monster drag thing, or literally doing drag because mommy didn't love them enough. But in the years I've run Boys, Bears, and Scares, I've observed that at least gay guys very often identify most with the final girl, uh, the one who is essentially sexless, but takes control and uh, sticks that knife where she needs to when the time comes. The, um, for me, the only monsters I identify with are the smart-ass ones that um, like to taunt and tease victims. But that might be a birth order syndrome thing because I am getting revenge for being the youngest. While the horror genre has come a long way, especially thanks to actual queer creators, in mainstream horror it's often business as usual. A, they aren't lesbians, they're two hot babes who happen to like fucking around with each other. Um, B, if they're gay men, they're usually fun and flamboyant. Um, I think that's mostly because straight filmmakers are trying way too hard to make sure we're aware they're gay, but they don't want to do it with a gay relationship, a kiss, or devil forbid, a sex scene. And C, anyone who doesn't identify as cis usually ends up still being the baddie, um, although at least they've been elevated to happily non-sistent evil rather than painted as mentally disturbed psychos like Norman Bates or um, Angela from Sleepaway Camp, you know, because of their gender confusion. In terms of mainstream horror, queer sex is still often avoided, but more glaringly, it's essentially taboo to have a queer main or a final character. 